We're going to go into our top three greatest robberies in boxing history, all right? So we can go all the way back from Jack Johnson to as recent of today as in Cambosa's last fight. Supposedly, that was a robbery. We're going to have to oh, yeah. that. But, um, all right, so we're going to start off with you, Sam. Who is your number three greatest robbery in boxing history? My number three... Um was that um, the De La Hoya versus that Felix Term guy. That was yeah. my number, th that's my number three. I remember seeing this fight, man. And and um, I had never heard of this Felix Term guy, ever. And, um, and I remember watching that fight live and I was like, what is happening? De La Hoya <laughs> is getting outboxed by somebody that's nobody's ever heard of you know um nobody knew who the guy was this was probably it's another it's another example of a cherry pick gone wrong mm -hmm. you know and um and if you recall that fight stern was outclassing him outboxing right. him i right. mean the stamina was out of the roof i mean you know deloya was even heavier and it was obvious that he couldn't handle that weight. And um, the lawyer just, he just looked stiff. He couldn't do anything. And um, that, it, 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 Felix deserved that fight, man. He deserved that fight and it was taken from him. That was one of the first robberies, uh, you know, that I remember seeing that, that I felt ashamed. I felt ashamed <laughs> of being, you know, Hispanic. And I felt a shame being a boxing fan because mm -hmm. that was total robbery, man. That was that's my number three. Well, look for all the people that watch out there. And by the way, we'd love to support from you guys. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, all under go follow us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, all under the Stick and Move podcast. For all you guys wondering if we if Sam and I rehearsed this, my number three is also. De La Hoya versus Stern is oh, oh wow wow yeah I mean but I have a little bit of a different theory when I watched it I it was one of those 11 one fights maybe 10 to 2 maybe 10 to 2 but it could have been 12 0 11 1 but look De La Hoya at the time he just came off of losing to Mosley and if he would have lost this fight you know it would he would have lost to he would have lost two times in a row and you got to remember, it's like you said, he was gaining weight. He was moving up a class so he can fight the guy nobody else wanted to fight in Bernard Hopkins because Hopkins was on this tear at the time. So they were trying to create this mega fight before getting to Hopkins. And this was when this was when taking um, tuna fights was OK. Nowadays, if you take a tuna fight, you're considered, you know, you're like you're ducking or something like that. But mm -hmm. back then, they up fights all the time when you're especially when you're moving up classes very important that you do that but you can't do that anymore but you know to the to the to the fans out there but i think this was a fight to set up that big big match between de la hoya and bernard hopkins which considering that de la hoya just lost to mosley he was still the face of boxing he was the golden boy the guy that that you know hollywood loved at the time from la right mm -hmm. and if he would have lost to Stern, that would have been back-to-back -back losses. The the Bernard Hopkins Felix Stern fight never would have sold the tickets that you know boxing needs to sell. So I think that it was one of those where it was kind of set up that way. That no matter what happens, I don't know if they told De La Hoya he could take the night off. I doubt that happened. I doubt that De La Hoya had his hand in this decision, but. It just felt like, you know, it was no matter what happens, unless De La Hoya gets knocked out, he's going to win so we can set up mm -hmm. the big fight for Bernard Hopkins. So that was my take on my number three, De La Hoya versus Sturm, who was 20-0 and 0 at the time, too, by the way. Wow, wow, wow. So, 
All right. So let's go ahead and go on to your number two. What is your number two? My number two robbery. I mean, another shameful uh, Saturday night was the Julio Cesar Chavez uh, versus Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. Okay. Fox. That what that look, man. Huge Chavez fan. I love Sweet P. Also. Right. But let's let's be unbiased here. Let's right, be dude. unbiased here. Look, bro. What I saw in that fight, I saw a Chavez that could not catch Whitaker, bro. He couldn't catch him. He couldn't corner him. His punches wouldn't land. Whitaker had is arguably one of the best defenses ever. And right. um, I mean, when they got in the exchange in the inside, Whitaker won the exchange in the inside. That was a huge robbery. It should have been my number one because mm -hmm. because in my eyes, Whitaker won, believe it, you know, this is, I had it. I had it. Um, if I could recall, I think it was seven um, seven five Whitaker. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I just saw Whitaker get robbed, man. And the reason yeah. it's huge. They became they gifted Chavez with a draw. Um, right. the reason that I feel like it could have been my number one, but I got another one. The reason because I feel that that's the fight that changed Pernell Whitaker's life. Okay, it, de yeah. it, it derailed him mentally, it derailed him, um, career wise. It, it, I think that we would have had, you know, Whitaker deserved that victory, man. Right, Whitaker does it. His defense, his 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 technique, the way he escapes. You know, it was just, it was just too much for Chavez. It was too advanced for Chavez, in my opinion. And right. and it just it it um, Whitaker gave it all, man. He fought one of the the biggest, you know, I mean, the greatest champion, I guess you could say, in Mexico at the time. That he, uh, Chavez was eighty seven and zero. Yeah, he Chavez was, was eighty-seven and zero, and um, that would have changed uh, Whitaker's frame of mind, his career, everything. That's why it, it, that was so important, and they took it from they took it from Whitaker, man. And I, the, he that's my number two. I remember hearing theories about that fight afterwards because you were talking about how Whitaker kind of fell off after that fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of theory out there that yes. Chavez had a hard time connecting, but supposedly, kind of like with Cruz and Davis, the, the punches that did land on Whitaker were effective. And it could have been one of those situations where Whitaker had never been hit like that, which was why he was he changed his game plan, where he was mostly running around the ring versus initiating the fight that Whit uh, Whitaker would normally do. That I don't know, maybe it just changed his style a little bit to afterwards being more open in his defense because he would lose to De La Hoya afterwards. He he never really rebounded after that fight. Um, so I, there's a lot of truth to your number two. I like your number two, man. Yeah, I feel that the judges didn't. Uh, it's like me. Remember, we talked about the, the uh, talked about this with defense. I think that the judges for the Whitaker Chavez fight did not give. They didn't care about mm -hmm. uh, about your defense. Right. They didn't. They they didn't care. They didn't see that as boxing. Those judges mm -hmm. saw, oh, uh, you know, Whitaker's avoiding the fight. You right. know what I mean? Right. And, and we talked why, about that before. Yeah, we talked we about talked, that. And that's you know we kind of score. You've scored. You 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 just scored on Cruz and 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 Tank saying that that kind of offense that Tank was doing is not worthy of the win. So what do you say to that with Whitaker and Chavez? Not to put you on the spot or anything. Yeah, no, I just feel that it was a different master class, bro. I mean, okay. I mean, Whitaker was just making Chavez look silly. It's too obvious to ignore. I could be mm -hmm. wrong with the whole, you know, you know, my opinion with the whole thing Davis picked Cruz. But when it comes to to a robbery like the Chavez Whitaker, it's it was, dude. I mean, Whitaker is one of the best boxers we ever had. You know, I agree. Uh, in I agree. history. And 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 he's probably the number one um, defensive fighter ever. I mean, I, when people 
people speak of defensive fighters, bro. It, yeah, it, it, it was sweet peas right there. Yeah. So was, it was yeah. just a clowning, bro, in my opinion. I remember, I have a memory to it where I remember being at a cousin's house and they had like a little barbecue, little, little aside of part barbecue. And I remember in the middle of that fight, just looking at my deals and my cousins and everybody, even like the mechanics that worked in the streets and stuff like that came over to watch the fight. And it was just quiet throughout the entire fight. They were watching their king go down in a silent, silent beatdown of a defeat. I don't know. Oh, I don't yeah. want to say it was a beatdown. I don't want to say it was a beatdown. No, 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 no. It was, no, just, no. It it was it, just, we weren't used to seeing Chavez swing and miss like that you mm -hmm. know we were used to seeing chavez punching through the guard and we didn't get to see that during that fight i just mm -hmm. remember seeing my my cousins and my deals and everybody just had this look of like what did we like we, the unthinkable just happened you know yeah mm -hmm. exactly so what I do like you got as your number two my number two is pacquiao versus horn that's mm. my number two you know, Pacquiao, he had already been losing at the time, you know, stuff like that. He wasn't the same Pacquiao. I tend to believe, and this might be a controversial conversation, but when he became super duper religious, I think he lost his killer instinct a little bit. And it kind of happened after the De La Hoya fight. He wasn't the same boxer anymore. He was kind of like, he was more into teaching, like giving boxing lessons, in my opinion, at least. I could be wrong. But that Pacquiao horn, it was fought in Australia. This guy, this horn guy, I think he had one loss at the time. He was nothing special. He was a tomato can. He was a statue, no flexibility, no bend in his style. He was just a straight up, you know, just jab and move fighter. Nothing. He wasn't quick or anything like that. And I think that's what the problem with this fight was. Because people were used to seeing, oh, that People thought that this would be such a big mismatch that Pacquiao would knock him out in the third or fourth or fifth round. But it came off as like this big old like uh, celebration that one of the biggest figures in sports at the time is coming to the humble area of Australia to give this relative unknown a shot. So it's kind of, it had like a homecoming kind of ceremony for this horn guy to represent his country. <clears throat> and I remember Apollo Rocky, Creed and Rocky. <laughs> Apollo Creed and Rocky. Where it was, and I even think I, I even think it was like like coined like that, if I'm not mistaken. But throughout the entire fight, like I told you before, we were expecting this this flurry bonanza that that Pacquiao always gives, and he was just sticking and moving. But here's the thing: it kind of reminded me of Canelo versus Ryder where it was one of those 11-1, 10-2 kind of fights, 12-0, but more of a boxing lesson. Mm -hmm. And because it was a knockout, people were like, did Joe Horn win this fight? And, you know, I look at the scorecards. I'm going to post them right here from the actual judges. They had it all unanimous decision, which were like, oh, okay, all for Pacquiao, right? We were all surprised that it went the distance anyways, but – Two of the cards are 113, 115, which meant that any round could have gone to Horn. It would have been a draw. But then there was one card that was 111, 117 mm -hmm. for Horn. And, you know, there's always that one judge that's like scoring like crazy. And that, you know, if you're going by scorecards, that's a decisive win for Horn. 3-0 all the way down. To me, that was one of the biggest robberies of all time because it kind of put the kibosh on Pacquiao's legacy. You know, it kind of mm -hmm. ended it. So that's why he's my number two. Yeah, uh, Terrence Crawford was supposed to was rooting for Manny Pacquiao because Terrence Crawford was getting the winner of that fight. <sighs> and yeah, and right. Terrence Crawford did say Manny got robbed. So that's so that's so funny. That's twice because that is Spence was supposed to fight the winner between Ugas and, and Pacquiao, and both Pacquiao came up short both times. That's wow, interesting. Wow, wow, wow. That's wow. interesting. That's interesting. All right, so what is your number one, my man? <laughs> my number one is obvious for millions of people out there, in my opinion, uh, is the Castillo and Mayweather fight, bro. 
Ooh, our first episode. Yeah. Very cool. Yes, yes. The Castillo and May better. Yeah, Castillo and Mayweather. For a long time, bro. I hey, I was, you know, I've seen Pretty Boy Floyd. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen him fight when he fought Diego and you know, all these all these great fights that he's been through. You know, um R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, ex yes. Rest in peace. Uh um yeah. dude, finally we get this fight. I didn't think Jose Luis Castillo was going to be the man. I didn't know he was going to be the guy. Right. Okay. And you just, you know, you know, just like Canelo had haters, Floyd had tons of haters. And sure. so everybody was waiting for him to, to lose, of course. For once, bro, we get a fighter okay, that goes and fights the fight of his life. Breaks through the shell, gets mm -hmm. to Floyd, hurts Floyd, outboxes Floyd, takes him to the corner, takes him to the ropes. I mean, he it, he he won the fight, bro. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. won the fight. Everybody knew it. Um, I saw the fight again, you know, mm -hmm. and and I scored it. And let me tell you something, man. That fight was huge, and it was a one of the biggest robberies that I can remember because we had it. Right. The code was broken. The Floyd code was broken. The mm -hmm. he was exposed. Right. And and we, you know this is a style that's going to beat Floyd. Of course, Floyd is smart. You know, winning the rematch, he knows, you know, you know, that's why he's considered one of the greatest. Um, right. um, but that night, he won that fight, bro. I could watch mm. it a hundred times and a hundred times Castillo won that fight. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows yeah. it. Even Floyd still talks about it. Right. You know, you know, oh, the Castillo fight, you know, you know, people say, you know, Castillo beat me. Blah blah blah, but they weren't watching this and that. And same excuse, he was saying that he couldn't use one of his arms. I don't know what his shoulder was hurting or whatever the deal was, but yeah. it's always that excuse, you mm -hmm. know. And um, for me, in my opinion, it was a huge loss for for because that also, you know, derailed Jose, you know Jose Luis Castillo's career mentally, and um, and that's why it was a huge important fight and. In my eyes, at least, and a lot of people's eyes, at least, Castillo won that fight. You know, we that was our first episode because, you know, you and I have talked about that for years already. And I had that fight as a draw the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was before Floyd was Floyd. But even when you're watching that fight, you see the tendencies that, that Floyd is known for using in that fight. That's when he was a little bit more of a brawler, kind of reminded me of a Stevenson today where he, you know, he has great defense, but throws down as well. And, you know, Floyd later on would become kind of like the 180 of that, more defensive, of course. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. There was more rounds where I felt that Mayweather, could, the, those rounds that I I chose for Mayweather, kind of like the tank and, and pitbull fight, could have gone for Castillo. Versus the Castillo rounds that I did have for him, they were definitely for Castillo. And let's not let's not talk about the points that were taken away or the point that should have been taken away from Floyd Mayweather that wasn't. So I'm cool with that being your number one because that would end up changing boxing. That was the fight that changed boxing. You can argue, mm -hmm. argue today forever. So yeah, I think yeah. That's your number one. All right. How about All your right. number one? So my number one is back to back Pacquiao versus Bradley part one. Oh yeah. Now this was actually interesting because I remember watching this fight and Pacquiao at this time, I think he was like on a seven year winning streak. I think his last fight, his last loss was to Marquez before the big knockout to Mar Marquez seven years earlier when he was getting into those wars uh, with uh, Morales and Marquez and 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 all these other great fighters, those lightweights at the time, and when he fought Bradley for many years, it was already like four years in a row. We we're waiting for that Mayweather-Pacquiao fight to 
never happened because there was always BS happening on the Mayweather side or maybe even the Pacquiao side. Depends how you look at it. But it was just never going to happen. And we, I think when Pacquiao fought Bradley, we kind of already moved on from that idea. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to happen, right? Uh, people that oppose Mayweather, they believe that Pacquiao, I mean, that's, I'm sorry, that Mayweather just is trying to wait out Pacquiao's prime because Pacquiao was much older. And I think it was the perfect storm because even though that fight, in my opinion, was an 11 1 kind of fight, the, when they took, when they got, and it was a split decision fight, by the way, but when they had Bradley winning that fight, Pacquiao was never the same. The next fight after that, that's when he got knocked out to Marquez and boxing changed after that. It was kind of like a letdown. So that bro, to me is bro. like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, Pacquiao outlanded Bradley 10 to 12 yeah. rounds, bro. He had over 100 more jabs, if I'm not mistaken, than Bradley. Mm-hmm. It was a complete domination. And this was actually the first time I ever heard this. This fight would be the first fight I ever heard where, you know what? We need to watch it with no volume. I never heard that before. And I remember, oh, that's a good idea. So I remember watching it with friends of mine. We were watching it with no volume. And we were like, hell yeah. I think it's 12-0 Pacquiao. And, you know, Pacquiao beat him in the rematch. And he beat him again in the in the third fight. All unanimous decision. So for me, Pacquiao, Bradley won. That changed boxing uh, history. Mm -hmm. That took the soul out of Pacquiao as a fighter. I agree 100%. And I read an article saying that the commission um, sent judges to go get retrained. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, Yeah, they they, 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 they had to uh, go get training because it was ridiculous. I mean, there wasn't, you know, it was that even Bradley was like, I got to watch the tape again. You know, that 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 was ridiculous, man. That's a good one. Yeah. So you have any last thoughts about our list? No, no, no. They're all good. There were, you know, there were all robberies that that changed the 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 history and the pace of of boxing and and the boxers careers. I mean, you know, uh, look at these guys, man. Look at the guys we're mentioning. You right. know these fights were these fights were important. These losses could have changed the way you know boxing was you know is right now. So mm-hmm. it was it was those were you know good robberies that we picked. There was uh, I remember you and I talked about this on an earlier episode, and I brought up how boxing has a nasty history mm-hmm. of forcing uh, an age champion to kind of give up his crown. To the younger buck yeah and i feel like that's what happened with pacquiao bradley that here was this this uh this guy from american boxer you know has a family man of course pacquiao's a family man too but and i i think they felt like because the floyd mayweather thing was probably never going to happen that they're like you know what it's time to pass the baton from manny pacquiao to somebody Mm -hmm. else maybe we can draw some interest create a new star and I think they forced it. And I'm kind of worried that's going to happen to Canelo in this PBC thing. I feel like he's going to go 2-0 or something like that. And then the third fight, he's going to win decisively. decisively and they're going to give it a draw or a win to the new guy. And then we're going to be forced to see a changing of the guard. Because the powers that be in boxing want a new face of boxing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be I, I thought it was going to be Manny Pacquiao um passing the crown uh to Spence. But it, you know, yeah. who gets one? You know, so yeah, that's true, man. Yeah, it All is right. what it is, man. All right, so we're going to leave it at that amazing episode. Remember mm-hmm. guys, follow us Instagram, uh, TikTok, make sure you guys subscribe to all to get our updates, our breaking moment updates on our instagram and tiktok all that good stuff and all at the stick and move podcast and uh until next week my man so until then don't forget to stick and move baby all right